Hey y'all, it's Anime Caveman. Today I'm going to be reading the 17th episode of Tokyo Gori. And this episode, while it wasn't really, didn't have really any action, this episode was immensely better than some of the action-centered episodes in the series because at the very least, the plot in this episode was coherent, it didn't feel like it was rushing the fuck out of things just to rush, although to an extent it kind of did at the start because... It didn't really explain how Connie Key and his group got out of the prison. I mean, while well, yes, it did explain that he got help by some of Arima's um, subordinates because Arima pretty much told him to follow his will and all that. While well, that kind of did happen, I wish you would have been able to see them actually escape and all that to get a few tense scenes. So at least the start it felt kind of rushed, but. I'm not going to complain too much because that really isn't too necessary. And then aside from that, it was nice to see that at the very least, like when you had Kaneki's um, friend Akita actually get treatment by these um, certain individuals that are from the, let's see, from the Great Wheel Act. I like how at the very least it seems like the show is building up towards a resolution where humans and ghouls can kind of live peacefully and together because when he implied that there's something that can kind of like change the world of humans and ghouls not being able to exist together i'm thinking it's implying that either gonna have a solution either through having like this group find some kind of way of changing the ghouls genes so that they can eat human food or maybe towards finding a food source that ghouls can eat whatever the case may be at the very least, the episode seems like it's kind of aiming towards an end goal. So those, those are pretty much pauses about this episode. And then even that, I like how you it kind of resolved a few plot points that some of the Tokyo Ghoul seasons have introduced. Like in Tokyo Ghoul Route A, you had Kaneki pretty much be the indirect cause of Yamori's death. And then you have Naki meet... Kaneki during Route A, and then it was all fine and dandy, but then I kind of like how this episode finally acknowledged the whole situation of Kaneki killing Yamori by Kaneki, I mean indirectly killing him, by Kaneki kicking Naki's ass, and then Kaneki pretty much getting Naki to be submissive because when it comes to the 13 ward, they just go follow whoever is the strongest ghoul or the strongest fighter there. So I like that. It finally ended up, ended off that one plot point from Tokyo Ghoul. And who knows, it might set up Naki for some character development, but knowing how Studio Parrot has handled this fucking anime, I'm not gonna count on that at all. I'm not, that would take too much competency. And at least when it comes to this show, Studio Parrot is completely incompetent. But I digress. For, for just leaving that door slightly open, I'm gonna give him some props. You won't see me ranting until maybe the end episodes if they fuck up. But, aside from that, I like how this episode you have a bit of humor by when Amon and Kaneki are talking to each other. It was nice to see how after that conversation, Amon went up to Akira and brought up the cat to try to help ease the situation, but Probably to not have Akira be pissed. And then when Akira's like, you trespassed into my house, an upstanding ghoul investigator. And when she said that, I gotta admit, they got me laughing. And that's nice to see. Whenever Tokyo Ghoul has like these little funny moments, it just makes the characters much more endearing. And then whenever they get into a conflict and actually get hurt, it actually makes me give a shit. So in all in all, good moves from this episode. And then when you had... Akira say she doesn't feel anger or joy, but then when she's like, I may, that may have been the truth, but I can't tell the truth for myself on how I feel. I was thinking, yeah, she really kind of is, she probably is happy that Amon came back. So I like that. It just shows off the way she's growing. And then I like how this episode even put in Akira for a position of character development because it was nice when Toka came clean that she's, that Toka was the one that killed Amato. And then when Toka and pretty much showed off kids that had their parents killed by ghouls. And then when she mentioned that 
Hanami's parents were killed by Mato, but she doesn't hold ill will. And then when Toka kind of pushes Akira towards Hinami and they hug each other and they both, and you have Akira crying, I gotta admit, that was a feel centric scene right there. And that was some nice character development for Akira, how she finally let go of that burden she had in the past, which is like an urge for vengeance, and then that's finally gone when she's when she finally says, I don't know what to hate anymore. So that was a beautiful scene, and it just goes to show that despite some of the shortcomings, this show can have some good moments, and that was really a good way to end off the episode, making it overall pretty good. And then the scenes where, where Amon and Kaneki are talking to each other, where Kaneki's like, he wants to help out the ghouls because while he did cause care about a small amount of humans, Kaneki cares about a lot more ghouls. And then when Amon's like, I'm still going to be doing what I think is right as his goal, that was nice to see. Getting to see some character development from Amon too, because he went from being unsure of himself to now doing what's the right thing. Because we saw in Tokyo Ghoul Season 1, he was in conflict constantly trying to understand why did Kaneki help out ghouls, but yet why didn't Kaneki kill Amon? And I like that. And then I like this episode even made Kaneki much more mature by giving him some character development because now he's more productive in regards to now he wants to force humans in a situation where they have to talk to ghouls. And that was a good scene too. Showing off as the series progresses, Kaneki's just becoming more mature, more smarter. And just taking all these factors in consideration, I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10. You had Akira, Amon, and Kaneki character development. You had the feels moment with Akira and uh, Hinami hugging each other. And you, know, and you know what? I can't really ask for more from these kind of relaxing episodes. So anyways, guys, these are my thoughts on the episode. Rate the video, subscribe if you want to see more reviews, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.